The Biden administration announced it would not send any government officials to the Beijing Olympic Games in February. This is a response to, quote, ongoing genocide and crimes against humanity in Xinjiang and other human rights abuses. A number of Western powers also accuse China of eroding Hong Kong's democracy, and the country still faces questions over tennis player Peng Shuai's disappearance from public eye. Meanwhile, China still denies allegations of a cultural genocide of Uyghur Muslims, and the foreign ministry fired back, saying, the US will pay for its wrongdoing. You can wait and see. This Olympic boycott might seem like an unprecedented message to send, especially when tensions are rising between the two powers. But it's important to remember, this is far from the first time we've seen Olympic boycotts. In fact, this would be the seventh time. The very first boycott was back in 1956, and it was for a whole host of different reasons. A number of countries in the Middle East boycotted in response to the Allied invasion of Egypt during the Suez Canal crisis. China withdrew because Taiwan was allowed to compete as a separate country, and a few European countries dropped out since the Soviet Union was allowed to compete even though they just invaded Hungary. Did you get all that? Yeah, and you thought 2021 was messy. This led to the famous blood in the water match between the Hungarian and Soviet water polo teams, which led to blows between teammates and even spectators. Hungary ended up taking home the gold. Over the next few decades, we see a number of competitions being boycotted by different countries. The first major US boycott came in 1980 when the U.S. led 65 countries to withdraw from the Moscow Games in response to the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan. Without a number of athletes from other major sports rivals, the USSR won 195 medals during those games, a record that's still held today. Interestingly, the USSR fought back with their own boycott of the LA Games in 1984, but that wasn't enough to keep those games from becoming one of the most profitable games in Olympic history and the most viewed event in TV history at the time. And that brings us to the next question. What's the point of these boycotts then? The upcoming boycott for the Beijing Games is for government officials and diplomats only. Athletes will be allowed to go, and unlike the 1980 Moscow Games, there's no threat that they could lose their US passports for competing. The idea is only to send a political message without inadvertently punishing American athletes who have been training for years for these games. This will be the first diplomatic boycott of its kind. All the previous ones affected athletes too. The Olympic Games have always and will always be intertwined with global politics. It's a chance to send symbolic messages to allies and rivals alike. And now all eyes are on Beijing to see how they respond. Here to tell us more about the reaction in Beijing, we have reporter Patrick Falk in China. Well, China's yet to announce what sort of countermeasures it might take against the U.S., but it has warned that Washington will pay a price for imposing a diplomatic boycott of the games. You know, we've been speaking to people on the ground here, and there is perhaps a little bit of disappointment that some official delegations won't be coming. And a lot of people say that sports and politics simply shouldn't mix, but they're not going to let that spoil the party. There's a huge amount of excitement in the build-up to the games just weeks away now. And, you know, one of the things that China's trying to do is to really really put winter sports in this country on the map. The government's trying to engage as many as 300 million people in winter sports and hopefully uh, make this country a real powerhouse in that area in the future. The IOC met with the organizing committee just a day ago to go through some final details in the run-up to the Games. Chai Chi, who's the president of the Beijing organizing committee, said that Beijing is now in the home stretch and they're really uh, trying to look at uh, countermeasures against COVID-19 and trying to make sure that everybody that comes will keep to the rules and restrictions. So that's really where a lot of the focus is right now for China. For Newsy, I'm Patrick Falk in Beijing.